it all in extras by March 31, and you'll get one month free. Plus, we'll waive the two and six month waiting periods on extras, so you can start climbing straight away. Why can't you skip out anymore? I'm not going to get that book there because I want to support the developers. Oh my gosh! Only known about What's the developers down there? Yes, sir. And he speaks in hands in the Royal Scientist for Elfies, only known about through his four followers, only appear in certain timelines yeah, this of the is game. The fun, with being shattered across time and space, he must share some connection with the other two characters. I think he has to. Characters ...that seemingly straddle time and space, Flowey and Sam, and indeed he does in the form of his Gaster Blaster. Entry 17. It says the following. Dark, darker, yet darker. The shadows cutting deeper. Photon readings negative. This next experiment seems. <gasps> photon blood, isn't it? Isn't photon blood? I think so. Seems very, very interesting. What do you two think? Based on the Gaster follower. Di Must have thrown in the last game for you, so it's all that. Alfies and Sands, yeah. Dialogue. He fell into, quote, his creation. His creation. Gaster himself fused his body with excessive amounts of determination. WD Gaster is Sam. WD Gaster is also Papyrus. Papyrus? How could he, yeah. the great Papyrus, be wrapped up in all of this? He wrapped up because he had the, the thing from the... <coughs> Trilogy. Last uh, time I left you with an absurd claim that Sam's yeah, and Sam's Papyrus, Papyrus are the disgusting. two halves of Gaster's fractured yeah, brain. It is, without question, one of the most extreme claims that I've ever made in the history of yeah, the show. And I have claimed that the FNAF story has been wrapped up like no less than five times. That's so true. it's that's pretty that's bad. That's and so far, I'd say I've done a fairly good job of covering the literal butt ton of information about yeah, Sam's been 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 all this. His connection with the true lab, his knowledge of bending time and Face, his desire to go back, his seraph laden font that appears when he falls asleep, his theme yeah, song's connection yeah. with Goner Kid, the Gaster Blasters, the secret room behind his house, the throne the that no one discovered himself, stands as a rational hatred the heck? Stop! to his two halves to create a single entity. Stop! That all of that. Do you Gosh. see now why this had to be in three parts? And that's only a portion of everything that we've covered. But today, it's time to get scientific I with Skelebro. So we stop and look at some of the weird details that Toby Fox included about these two characters, you start to realize that their connection goes much deeper than just being mere brothers. Really oh, excited. and I'm not done. We're concluding this whole three-episode series by revealing the fact that Papyrus isn't nearly as naive as he lets on. Sure, yeah, he's playing actually innocent small. enough, but behind that basketball shoulder pad wearing spaghetti loving star man spaghetti, I like spaghetti is, on. Facade is someone who is so deep scary. with Sam's and Alfie's and the Gaster experiments. These three game theories are a trilogy big than Mass Effect, and hopefully with the more satisfying what ending. The heck? Star Children, really? Spoiler! Go You're drunk, and don't you dare! Don't you <laughs> dare for a second make Mass <clears throat> Effect Andromeda your sloppy seconds. Coming out what the heck? Really I can't. Do anything about it? I am concerned. I'm not gonna play so these I games. You they stop. Doggone it! We're gonna start with science, specifically the neuroscience of Undertale. Take that. Now, I'm pretty sure that you've probably heard the old adage the by now that the two halves of the brain handle different. The left is analytical and the right, and the right is creative. Is... Now, while this yeah. may not be 100% like scientifically works. accurate, it does have some basis in scientific reality. In the late 1960s, a man named Roger Sperry wanted to explore the extent to which the two halves of the human brain could function independently. To do this, he took some volunteers and severed their corpus callosum, aka the nerve fibers is that, that carry signals between the two halves of the brain. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you gotta read the fine print when you sell your body to science. Oh, hey, I'm just a college student in need of some extra date money, Cindy and Women's Studies. She's pretty cute. Welcome to the experiment, kid. We're cutting your brain in two. Gee willikers, scientist. That sounds dangerous. Ah, those nerves aren't important. Here's 20 bucks. Nighty night. Now where's my Nobel Prize? Okay, but in all seriousness, this guy wasn't just hacking away at McNugget-starved brains. In the olden days of the 60s, this is actually how they cured extreme cases of epilepsy. Really? By dividing the brains right down the middle. And although the patients were able to live normal lives, every so often a strange functional gap would start to pop up. Not being able to identify something that they saw, having trouble with the words.
hard perceiving something on one side of the body but not on the other. So Sperry studied these perceptual gaps and confirmed that the two halves of the brain are indeed specialized in specific functions. What is the your left brain to? is the verbal and logical center. It can break down numbers and words and analyze situations. Oh, that's cool. Conversely, the that's right brain is the nonverbal and intuitive center. It thinks in pictures or patterns. It's involved when you're making a map or giving directions but can only produce rudimentary words and phrases. However, it contributes the emotional context to language. In the words of the Sperry himself, that was the great pleasure words. and feeling in my right brain is more than my left brain can find the words to tell you. Get it? Because the right brain has feelings, but the left brain is the one who does all the talking. Oh, that's funny. Anyway, it'll all make sense when we look at how this applies to Gaster and the two Skelebros. Papyrus dreams big. He wants to capture yeah, humans he wants to impress to Undyne wants and wants to join life. the royal guard. The cares oh, the of his world life? are whimsical. He likes japes and gags and even wears a caped costume at all times. Sans also mentions that Papyrus gets cranky without a bedtime story. He wears his emotions on his Starman inspired sleeve, becoming flustered if the player even hints at flirting with him. Basically, yeah. Papyrus seems very emotional. He seems like a driven. teenager and stuff. Yeah. Well, like, like, like less than a teenager. Sans, on the other hand, seems a lot more analytical and logical than his brother. He's very sarcastic, dry, yeah, and he's cool. Clever. He's funny. At times, it's difficult to he's tell if he's being serious or very, very threatening. He's also shown to be extremely intelligent. While Papyrus takes a little bit of time to figure out that the player is human, Sans yeah, sees it me. immediately. And in Genocide Run, Sans sees through the player's facade for the monster that they are. He even asks them to continue pretending to be a human for Papyrus' sake. Sans, all his joking is very logical, That's interested weird. in That's science and face. the time-space continuum, driven by reasoning. He's the left brain. And sure, those surface connections are all well and good, but I wouldn't be making this claim if it didn't go a whole lot deeper. So let's take a minute to look at the Skelebro's puzzle section in Snowden. Throughout this iconic section of the game, Papyrus and Sans present you with various challenges to block your progress. Papyrus what? I have a theory about what's gonna happen, okay? There's gonna be, there's gonna be Junior Jumble, there's gonna be crosswords, and one of them's gonna be left side one oriented, and one of them's gonna be right side oriented. It's gonna be crazy. Challenges are all spatially <laughs> focused, guys, doing happen. things like forcing you to map out a walking path so as not to step on the same switch twice. Puzzles that require the right brain to solve. On the other hand, the one challenge Georgia. that Sans presents you with, the Monster Kid's word search, a language-based task, is one specifically oriented from the left brain. The left so brain. are the left and right halves of your mind blown yet? No, well, if not, it keeps going. One detail I always thought was weird was the game going out of its way to tell you which type of puzzle in the newspaper the two brothers find more difficult. Sans insists that the word search is harder, but Papyrus thinks saying, that the word jumble is harder. A word jumble involves taking a series of letters, breaking them down and rearranging them to find the words that's made of those letters. It makes sense <gasps> then that, that Papyrus, the as the right brain, would find it more difficult. It's about forming words, a specifically yeah. language-based process, and why Sans, as the left brain, would find it easier. On the other hand, a word search, while still a left brain activity, involves identifying already existing words within a giant collage of letters. Yeah. Since it's just identifying patterns of existing letters, it would make sense why the creative pattern-based papyrus would find that easier and why Sans would think it's a bit harder than the jumble. It's crazy, right, how these details line up. But if that still that's wasn't insane. enough, even the humor of these two matches up with their appropriate brain hemisphere. Papyrus, really? as the right brain, would be much more prone to physical comedy. His so-called japes, Sans, as the left brain and linguistic center, would get yes, endless it's... amounts of joy Verbal. out of wordplay. Verbal. Things like, yeah. say, okay. bad puns. Oh, well, wouldn't you know? In fact, that's why so many of you get such cringy joy out of my bad puns on Twitter. As theorists, most of us, myself everywhere. included, are analytical left oh, brains. So, so a witty turn of phrase will keep us raffle coptering for days. Then there's the true pacifist ending, where Papyrus doesn't know what? the word for sun, having to rely on Sans to tell him. Yet another language-based knowledge item, and yet yeah. another odd detail that gets explained away by the split brain Why theory. The Even their handedness is. aligns. Sans greets the protagonist with a handshake using his left hand, holds and drinks a ketchup bottle with his left hand while dining at Grillby's, steers a tricycle what? using his left hand with some pacifist credits, and even manipulates gravity during the genocide boss battle with, you guessed it, his left hand. Now, what is right? He's poking all the time because he's much, hiding he something in there. He his chin with his right hand, an action you would be a lot more comfortable doing with your dominant side. And yes, a quick disclaimer, since I know it's going to appear in the comments, I know that handedness is 
is at least partially controlled by the opposite hemisphere of the brain, but I'm saying from a symbolic left-right yeah, perspective symbol. and not a functional one. But just like the slap chop guy, I'm still not done because if we want to dive into okay. semantics, we can even use the names of the skeletons to connect them even further. As we mentioned last episode, oh. W.D. Yaster's name appears to be a combination of two different fonts, Wingdings yeah. and Wingdings Aster. And Aster. Wingdings is a completely silly font. Yeah, it's because the heads and stuff. It's unreadable to anyone who doesn't know how to decode it. This lines up with the ridiculous scheming papyrus. Aster, oh, on the other hand, is a very serious, very color between the lines, normal looking font. And this yeah. lines up with Sans, who, despite his jokester appearance, is very serious underneath. Casting judgment on you in the final minutes of the game, holding down multiple jobs, having some mysterious yeah. role in the determination experience, very being very focused into his research on the time space continuum. So, yeah, that's why I think the two halves of Gaster's mind are now embodied in the two Skelebros. When you actually take a step back and look at all the details the that just fit into this theory, there's a lot of them. Their behavior fits unbelievably well. Their names and visual design are undeniably related. And in addition to everything else we've covered, the fact that the two brothers appeared out of nowhere and exist separately from the rest of the other monsters in Underground is also really telling. But it does leave us with one last question. Why would Sans be aware of their origins while Papyrus isn't? Papyrus seems ignorant to everything in the secret lab behind the house. Maybe the bar's so hard and or had a history of working together. So Maybe why he doesn't he have gaster blasters or any knowledge of the time space continuum? Anything like that? Well, who's to say he doesn't? See, For as innocent as he behaves, he's in just as deep as Sans. The evidence the doesn't pop up too often, but every once in a while he'll slip and reveal just how much he really knows. First, Similar to Sans, he clearly knows about different timelines and the ability to manipulate actions across them. After going to some extreme lengths across different saves and reloads to convince Sans that you're a time traveler, he finally gives you a key to his room to reveal the truth. Go in and what you find will shock you. He tricks you into running on a treadmill. Funny, sure, but the real mind blow here is when Papyrus enters and asks, Is Sans pranking you across time and space? I hate it when he does that. So heck? clearly he knows about Sans' timeline hopping and isn't weirded out by it. Then, in the true pacifist ending, Papyrus exclaims that this is the worst ending since he's not a royal guard. <laughs> That's funny. But wait. What? Saying that this is the worst ending implies that he knows other endings are possible. It also implies that he said they could have been. Like, that was the worst thing because everyone survived. What the heck? Possible. Again, demonstrating a knowledge of different timelines he seemed ignorant of for the rest of the game. And then what about his connection with Gaster? Well, like Sans, he's also able to manipulate gravity, once again implying that they are two halves of the same whole. Mm. It's also worth noting that it's the only one of the soul modes that actually manipulates a spatial law. Green gives you a shield, yellow is had by pressing a button, and purple is a bunch of spider webs, but blue changes gravity. Yeah. No small feat, but it goes beyond that. In one of the patches to the game, if you stop a genocide run by sparing Papyrus, he says that it's good you stop when it did. If you hadn't, he would have had to use his special attack, and that the player would have been, quote, blasted. He then quickly changes the subject, but it's an odd choice of words, right? Blasted seems to imply him also having the ability Blast to use the blast. What the heck? And just to clarify, his special attack is not changing the heart to blue, because he starts referencing the special attack after turning the heart blue. And it's also not the giant bone that he uses to end the battle since the annoying dog steals the special attack and he winds up having to use a normal attack which features that giant bone. It's also important to note that this odd detail was included in a patch to the game. Especially when- Great extra dialogue from the bars and boys room. We spent the books with- What's going on? That he did not use! What the heck? Other details added during those exact same patches were making gas- a more official part of the game experience. You no longer had to hack into the game's fun value in order to experience Gaster as a real part of the game's lore. Given all of those details, I think it's likely that Toby Fox was strongly hinting at us to believe that Papyrus also has access to Gaster Blasters. And with that... That makes sense. We've reached the end. Literally everything really? in three episodes that I could piece together about how so all of these minutes. characters connect. And when I stopped and looked at all this evidence to write these episodes, the most sensible conclusion was That's one that disgusting. I initially thought was okay. absolutely absurd. That Sans and Papyrus are two halves of the Gaster whole. It was, quite honestly, the neuroscience bit and the fact that they appeared out of nowhere that sold me on it. 
Were they created when Gaster fell into his machine? Or were they present throughout the whole series of experiments? It's not really clear. I personally like to think the former, but the pictures in Sam's laboratory of three smiling faces with the quote never forget seems to imply the latter. It's Either way, it this is how our story and the theory <laughs> ends. Because as Toby Fox himself confirmed on Twitter, quote, you've all seen the happiest outcome. Neither of them could fix the machine. No matter how hard they try, no one can. Neither of them being the operative word there because it means not just Sans, but both the brothers were involved in trying to fix the machine. The Skelebros wrote never forget on that picture because they don't want to end up like Goner Kid or what Azrael warned them about. That by resetting the timeline over and over again, the memories start to fade from existence. They can't let themselves forget Gaster or their former origins, even though they'll never be able to bring oh him back God. or get their normal lives back, no matter how hard they try. It gives this game, even in the happiest, true pacifist ending, a new layer of tragedy a new depth of story that is hidden to almost 82 oh percent of the game's players. What the it just heck? shows how much care and love went into crafting this plotline and gives testament to why everyone loves this game's story so very much. But hey, that's just, just a, a theory. theory. A game, game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. Oh, that was really cool.